Hey everyone, in today's video, we'll be trying to solve this problem. Um, basically, there's a cube with a spider and an ant on two opposite corners of that cube. Um, the spider moves at random along the edges, um, and we're asked to calculate the number of expected turns before the spider reaches the ant. Now, this problem might seem pretty daunting, since uh, we have no idea what paths the spider can take. Uh, you might try to classify every single path the spider can take um, to try to find the expected number of turns, uh, which is impossible since some paths could be, um, you know, a thousand turns or whatever if he's just going in a, in a circle. So how would you solve this problem? Well, in order to solve this, there's actually a trick that uh, we'll look at, but let's try solving some easier problems first. All right, so in order to really understand this trick, let's try a simpler problem first. Uh, so in this problem, we have two players, A and B, um, who, that play a game. Basically, um, A goes first, and the winner of each round gets $1 from the other. Um, a is better at this game, so A wins two-thirds of the games. Um, a starts off with $1, B with $2, um, and they play until one of them is bankrupt. And so we're asked to find the probability that A wins. And you can already see that this is similar to the other question um, in the sense that we have no idea what, what these games look like, right? The one game could be that A wins, B wins, A wins, B wins, A wins, B wins a thousand times until someone finally wins. So we can't really, you know, calculate these probabilities just by trying to uh, look at all the different games that could have been played. So an, a better way to solve this is to let's, let's let X be the probability that A wins. Probability that A wins. And let's think about what X could be. Well, if A wins the first two games, then A is one, right? Because at that point, A is $3. So we can say that X is equal to two thirds times two thirds times one. Uh, this is just the probability that A wins the first two games. And in that case, A just wins. Um, well, what happens if A loses the first game? If A loses the first game, then A is lost. Uh, a is bankrupt, so they stop playing. So the only other scenario we have to consider is the fact, or the scenario when A wins the first game and B wins the second game. Um, that has a probability of two thirds times one thirds of happening. Um, and in that case, what is A's probability? Well, if A wins the first game and B wins the second game, then A is back at $1, right? So A's probability of winning is just X. It's the same as it was in the beginning, A is back where it started. So we can just say this uh, x is equal to 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 1 plus 2 thirds times 1 thirds times x. Um, so we can just solve for x here. Um, this is equal to 4 over 9 plus 2 over 9x. Uh, bringing this over to the left hand side, we get 7 over 9x is equal to 4 over 9. Um, so it follows that x is equal to 4 over 7. Uh, let's see if this is actually correct in a simulation. All right, so let's try to simulate this game between A and B. So we'll first import random. Uh, we'll define this game. Uh, we'll just call it two pl players. There we go. Uh, N will just be the number of games they actually play. Um, and so we can keep track of the number of wins A has. And then we'll just loop through uh, these N games. Um, and we'll define A money to be uh, the number of the amount of money A has. So at the beginning, A's money is just one. So we can say while a money uh, is less than three, three and a money um, is bigger than zero, um, we'll just say x is equal to random dot uniform uh, between zero and one. And so if x is less than two thirds, um, then a wins, right? Uh, let's yeah, a wins. Um, so in this case, a money would increase by one. Uh, let's see, plus equals plus equal to one. There we go. And so else, uh, a money just decreases by one, M minus equals one. All right, so here we can just say if a money um, is equal to three, then a obviously won, so we can just increase a wins by one. Um, and so yeah, let's print uh, the probability um, that a wins. We just say a wins divided by n, there we go. And we'll just print uh, another line here, print. There we go. And so we can try to run this for uh, two players. Let's run it for like 100,000 games. All right, so if we run this, we can see A's probability of winning is 
0.57, uh, which is pretty exactly 4 over 7. Uh, so our math was right. All right, so let's try another example of this technique. So in this example, we have two players, you and I, um, and we take turns rolling a dice. So if the dice shows a four, the person rolling uh, immediately wins. If it's above a four, uh, you get to roll again. And if it's below a four, the, the player rolling switches. Um, and so if you get to roll first, what is your probability of winning? Well, let's again define x to be probability of winning. Um, and then we can just try to solve for x again. So x uh, is equal to 1 over 6 times 1 in the case where you automatically uh, roll a 4. And then we have plus 2 over 6 times x, right? This is the case where you roll a 5 or a 6. In that case, you get to roll again. So your probability of winning uh, stays the same. And then you just get plus 3 over 6 times. Well, what should I put here if the the person rolling switches, so the other person gets to roll? What's his probability of winning. Well, in that case, it's just one minus x, right? Because the probabilities have to add to one. So the other person uh, roll, or sorry, your probability would be one minus x. Uh, so let's just try to solve for x. So we got one over six plus uh, two over six x plus three over six minus three over six x. Um, bringing the x's to the left-hand side, we get seven over six x is equal to three, or sorry, four over six. 4 over 6, uh, which means that x is again 4 over 7. Um, so we can see that actually the probability of winning was the same uh, for this game and the last game. All right, so let's try to simulate this game as well. Uh, we'll import random as usual, then we'll define the dice game um, game with n uh, as the number of games we play. Uh, we'll define the dice numbers. Uh, this is just all the numbers on the on the dice. Um, and we'll again take track track our wins. Um, we can again use the, the for loop range n um, and we'll say we'll keep track of whose turn it is. Uh, in this case, uh, sorry, my turn is equal to true because um, we, we start off and we'll just say done is equal to false so that we can say while well, not done. Um, and so we want to pick a random choice from those dice numbers. Um, sorry, dice numbers. Um, and so we'll say if x is equal to 4, well, then we win, right? So we'll just say done is equal to true. Um, actually, we won't win. The, the person whose turn it is wins. Um, and so if x is less than 4, uh, we'll just say my turn uh, is not equal to, or sorry, is equal to not, not my turn. Uh, we can make this a bit better. All right. And so, I mean, if x is above 4, we can just do nothing. The while loop will just repeat. Um, so we'll just say if my turn out here then we'll just add one to wins. And again, we can print the probability of winning. Uh, of winning, uh, we'll just say wins divided by n, and we can print this again. All right, so let's run this again for uh, like 100,000. All right, so if we run this, we can see we again get 0.57, um, which again is about four over seven. So our math again was right. All right, so now we're ready to tackle the, the lazy spider problem. This is what this problem is called. Uh, don't ask me why. But um, so how can we approach this? Well, you can notice that the spider, um, right now he's three edges away from the ant, right? And in fact, right now, three edges away, that's the furthest he's, he ever is, right? This three edges away. Um, let's say if the spider was here, he'd only be two edges away. And here he'd only be one edge away. So somehow we can try to, um, encode these like how far the spider is away uh, into our problem so that we can we can use we can apply the same trick. So let's define three different variables. All right, so we've defined three random variables uh, x1, x2, and x3, um, and they just represent the number of turns uh, the spider has to take to reach the ant when the spider is one edge, two edge, two edges, and three edges away. Um, and so what we're really looking for is the expected value of x3, right? Because right now the, the spider is three edges away from the ant. So let's try to write down what the expected value of x3 is. Um, well, you notice that the spider has one third probability to take each of these three edges. Um, and let's say if he takes this edge, well, if he takes this edge, he'll be here where he's, uh, he's at x2. The, his expected number of edges to get here or to get to the ant is just e of x2. 
So we can use the e of x2 and e of x1 um, and the definition of e of x3. So let's see what that looks like. Um, so if the spider goes to the left, that has probability of one third. Um, and he actually already takes one turn. Um, so we have to add one to his total total score. So this would be one plus e of x2, right? And uh, actually, you can see that in any direction that he goes, uh, it's always one plus e of x2. Um, so this is just plus one third times one plus e of x2 plus one third times one plus e of x2. Right, and this is just one plus e of x2. So let's try to find e of x2 now. Um, e of x2, um, again, we have, if let's say the spider is here, um, in one third of the cases, he actually goes back to where he was. So that's just one plus e of x3, right? One third times one plus e of x3. Um, now, in the other two cases, in one case, he goes here, in which case he's one edge away. So that would just be one plus e of x1. And same thing for here. Here again, he's one edge away. So actually, we have plus two thirds times one plus e of x1. That's our expression for e of x2. And then we can also have e of x1. Um, the spider is here, for instance. Yeah, you'll notice it's all the same. It doesn't matter which corner he's at. It'll always be the same expression. Um, and one third of the cases, well, he'll just get to the end. So that's just one. So it'll just be one third times one. Um, if he's, however, if he goes here, he'll be two edges away. And same thing for here. He'll be two edges away again. So again, we'd have times two thirds um, plus two thirds times one plus e of x2. All right, so this is a system of uh, three linear equations and we have three unknowns. So technically this is solvable. So let's try to solve this. All right, so I cleaned up these expressions a bit, um, but let's try to solve this now. So you'll notice that here we already solved for e of x1. So we can just plug this into here and get an expression for e of x2. So we'll have that e of x2 is equal to one third uh, plus one third times e of x3 plus two thirds plus two thirds times all this business. So it'd be one third plus two thirds plus uh, two thirds e of x2. Um, if we can distribute it, this out, out, it'll just be one third plus one third e of x3 uh, plus two thirds plus uh, two over nine plus four over nine and then plus four over nine e of x2. Um, bringing over the two or four over nine e of x2 to the other side, we get five over nine uh, e of x2. Um, and then we can just add everything together. Uh, this is uh, three over nine plus six over nine plus two over nine uh, plus four over nine, that just gives us uh, three over nine plus nine over nine. Uh, sorry, that's ooh, that's 11 over nine, 15 over nine. And then right here we have plus one third E of X three. Uh, multiplying by nine, we just get that uh, five E of X two uh, is equal to 15 plus three E of X three. Um, and then if you divide by five, you just get that e of x2 is equal to three plus three fifths e of x3. All right, let's clean this up and uh, solve for e of x3. All right, so we know that e of x2 is three plus three fifths e of x3. So now we can just plug this back into our original expression up here. Um, here we just have that um, e of x3 is equal to one plus uh, three plus three fifths e of x three. Um, bringing over the three fifths e of x three, we get that two fifths e of x three uh, is equal to one plus three, which is just four. So let's just write four. And then multiplying by five and dividing by two, we get that e of x three is equal to 10. Right. So. The expected number of turns that the ant, or sorry, the spider takes from the opposite side of the corner is 10. Uh, this is our final solution, and we can even check that this is true in a simulation. 
All right, so let's try to simulate this lazy spider game. I will again import random and we'll define our lazy spider function uh, with again, we'll do n trials. Um, and so the first thing we have to do is define a mapping. Uh, this mapping will basically be responsible for all the choices that the spider makes um, from the corner that he's at to the corner that he wants to go. So right now on the screen, we'll overlay uh, uh, a picture of the, the cubes with all the, the corners uh, from one to eight uh, enumerated so that we can create this mapping. So for example, for one, it would be two, four, five. And then for two, it would be uh, one, three, six. And then for three, uh, two, four, seven, and so on. Oops, two, four, seven. Yeah, and so on. All right, so we have our mapping. Uh, let's define this choices uh, array. This is just one, two, and three. Uh, 0, 1, and 2. Uh, this will decide which uh, choice the spider actually takes. So if if the random variable that we choose uh, decides it's 0, then let's say he's at 2, he'll just go to, to corner 1. Same thing for 1, he'd go to corner 2, and for 2, he'd go to corner 6. Um, and so you'll see how that, how that works. But we can uh, define the sum of moves variable to just be the sum of all the moves that the spider makes uh, throughout all the games. And then we can again uh, loop through all the trials um, for just for n times. And we'll let the spider position um, be 7. Um, and by that sense, the ant's position would be 1. Um, so we can just find n moves to be 0. This is the number of moves the spider makes in this particular trial. Um, and then we'll say while spider position is not equal to 7, uh, or sorry, not equal to one because that's where the ant is. Now we'll say choice is equal to random dot choice um, from the choices. Uh, we'll say spider position is equal to uh, mapping uh, the spider's current position and then to the uh, choice that we have. And then we'll just say uh, none moves is pl uh, we'll just increment the number of moves. Um, then down here we'll just add the uh, number of moves to the sum of all the moves uh, and moves. There we go. And down here, we can again print uh, expected number of moves. And then we'll just say, uh, sorry, S sum of moves uh, divided by n. That, okay, there we go. Um, and we can print this again. And then here, we'll just say lazy spider. Uh, we'll run this 10,000 times. All right, so let's try to run this. Uh, obviously, we made a mistake here. Let's try it again. There we go. 9.9, 9.96, 10. So it seems to hover around 10. So that means our math was probably right. Yes. All right. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I think this trick is really helpful to use in solving problems or in quant interviews. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe. And other than that, I'll see you guys next time.